Ciao, I'm Mario from Swiss Reviews and today I'm not doing a review because as I found out you are not really that interested in my reviews but I recently did a video or some videos about how much it cost me to own certain kind of cars and I got a lot of comments on those videos and I would like to use this video to respond to some of the questions that were asked and at the same time make a point that you don't have to work on your own car to be a car guy. Point in case, me. Because I basically do not work on my own cars. Even though I usually drive old cars, expensive to fix cars, I always have them fixed by a professional. And there are a few reasons for that. And let's start with reason number one. First, and this may sound really snobby, but I really don't like manual labor. I don't enjoy it, I don't get any pleasure of it. I am a fat guy, so I attire easily. And just working with my hands is something I personally do not like. If you do, great. But for me, this has been a very frustrating thing and this is something I try to avoid as much as possible. So this is one of the reasons I don't do any major work on my cars. I have done smaller things like changing trim pieces, maybe a heater valve or something like that. The interior, the audio stuff, dismantling an interior, yes, this is something I will do. But no mechanical work, no, no really involving work, because I really don't like doing manual labor, which may also be caused by the fact that I'm really bad at it. I mean, I'm not terrible, I can work with my hands, but since I don't enjoy it as much, I don't do it very well. I get frustrated very easily. And usually when I have to do something, when I have to dismantle something, I tend to break things. So instead of fixing what I was supposed to fix, usually then I have to fix more stuff because I broke other things in the process. So this is one reason why I don't work on my own cars. Another reason is I do not own a house. In fact, I don't own anything. I just rent an apartment. So I don't even have a workspace or a garage or something where I can do the work in private. So whatever I do, I basically have to do it in a shared garage. And as you might understand, it's not that well liked by other occupants if you just have a, a half dismantled car in your shared garage. And the other thing is I need to have a private environment to work on my cars because if I am gonna have to do the work, there will be a lot of swearing and I don't want people passing by to think, you know, they have to call an exorcist or something like that. So I need to have an enclosed environment for, my, for myself to do the work. Reason number three why I don't work on my own cars is because I depend on my car. I need my car as transportation, therefore I cannot start a job that's maybe a big job that will overwhelm me and then not have the car ready to use the next day to go to work. And yes, while I often own two cars at the same time, I cannot just switch from one car to the other because since I am cheap, I keep my second car at my mom's place, which is over one hour away. So I basically need my main car to be working all the time. Another reason why I don't work on my own cars is that I don't have any friends that work on cars. Really, I, I have friends. No, but as soon as I get to do a job that's a bit more involving and I need some help, I basically have nobody to call. Basically, all of my friends, they work in office jobs. They are not that mechanically inclined and they are also not, not that much interested in working on cars. Even my one car guy friend, and he's really a car guy, um, he recently he tried to cut up his engine bay because his battery that he bought wouldn't fit his classic car and fortunately I suggested that he might have installed the battery backwards and that he need, didn't need to cut up anything and guess what that was the case so ah, I cannot rely on anybody to help me and this is another reason why I take my car to the garage. By the way I'm sitting in my 2008 Lexus LS600H this is my daily driver, it's the car I drive everywhere and it's a car I dearly, dearly love. If you think you can guess the exact reason why I love this particular car, please write it in the comment section down below and I will name the person who guessed it in the next video.
and you will win my respect because I have nothing to give away. Um, yeah. Another reason why I don't work on my own cars is because I live in Switzerland. And I think there might be a cultural difference between Switzerland and other parts of the world, but here in Switzerland, it's not that common for people to work on their own cars. So you basically never see people working on cars in their driveways, usually also because people who own driveways are people who have more money, so they, they don't work on their own stuff anyway. And Switzerland in general is a country of renters, so most people live in apartments and they don't even own them, so they don't even have the place where they could work on a car. But as a general cultural thing, people tend not to work as much on their cars in Switzerland as they do in other places. Even things like auto parts store. In America, you might be used to, to be able to go to an auto parts store and buying, you know, a water pump for a common car off the shelf or something like that. In Switzerland, it's not like that. I mean, there are much fewer um, auto parts store. And even when you are at an auto parts store, they usually have consumables and stuff like that. But if you need, for example, a water pump for a Golf, which is a super common car here, you are not very likely to, to find it on the shelf. So whenever you need parts, you have to go to the dealer and usually they have to order it in. They will usually get it within half a day a day, but it's not like, oh, you go to the supermarket, pick up a part and you fix your car. So it's, it's some already more involved. And I think this also goes to show that, you know, do it yourself fixes on cars are less common here. Then of course, there's the roadworthiness inspection, the MFK as we call it here, the Motorfahrzeugkontrolle. And that is an inspection that cars have to do periodically. New cars usually first time after five years, then a second time after three years, and then it's all two years. So all two years, your car gets inspected for roadworthiness. And as you can imagine, the Swiss are very thorough at inspecting cars. So the cars generally tend to have to be in really, really, really good condition. That means that some jobs that you may regard as, yeah, you know, nice to have, um, can be mandatory in Switzerland as you will not pass your inspection. For example, on my uh, Phaeton video, I mentioned that I replaced the control arms because the bushings were worn out. And I got some comments that said, well, you know, you replaced uh, control arms. That was not really necessary. And yes, it was necessary because the car would have failed the roadworthiness inspection. This is also one of the things that makes car ownership in Switzerland a bit more expensive. But then again, the cars tend to be in great shape for that reason. So does not working on my own cars mean I'm not a real car guy? Obviously, I disagree. Because first, I know a lot about cars. I like to drive cars. I dream about cars. Cars are basically my first love. And just because I don't work on cars doesn't make me less of a car guy than somebody else. I mean, the nice thing about car culture is that we can all enjoy cars in different ways. And my way is I don't really like to work on the cars because I don't really like doing this frustrating work for me. If you like working on cars, then that's great. I envy you because I would save a lot of money. But on the other hand, I knew a long time ago that I don't like doing manual work and that I'm really bad at it. Actually, with 14, I did a two-week internship at the car dealership where I worked in the workshop and in the sales department. And um, that cleared a lot of things up because I still, I liked the cars, but I realized in the time in the workshop that I really didn't like that work. So that made it clear early on for me that if I wanted to be able to enjoy cars, while not being good at working on them myself, I would have to, you know, try and go to college, try to, to get a good job, so I have money to spend on cars. And this again, it may sound super capitalistic and everything, but the thought of being able to own nice cars was one of the main motivators for me to actually get my bachelor's degree. And therefore, even though I am not rich, Nowadays, I'm in the position where I can afford to, well, you know, spend five grand on a repair on an old car, even though it makes no sense because the car is worth nothing. So I factored the cost of owning cars into my life's planning 
and so far it's worked out pretty much okay. But then there's the people who said, oh Mario, you spent so much money on that VW Phaeton or on that Mercedes SL55, wouldn't it have been much cheaper to buy uh, a new car or to lease a new car? And no, it wouldn't. I don't know where it's in your part of the world, but in Switzerland, leasing new cars is kind of expensive. And if I lease a car of the caliber of the cars that I drive as old clunkers, like big V8 saloons or, um, or coupes or sports cars or 12-cylinder cars or something like that, these are cars that new in Switzerland tend to cost around 200,000 Swiss francs, which translates to about 200,000 US dollars. And you get so much depreciation that even if you get a good lease, the leasing rates alone are going to be around 25,000 Swiss francs a year. So a car like the Phaeton that I owned for four years would have cost me alone in leasing rates about 100,000 Swiss francs. And that's without insurance, that's without fuel and the other stuff you tend to spend on cars. So for me, even though I spend boatloads of money on the cars, it's still cheaper to buy an old car, have it fixed by a garage, than buying or leasing a new equivalent car. Sure, if you compare it with leasing like a normal car, like a Toyota Corolla or a VW Golf, yes, obviously those cars are going to be cheaper, but then again, you don't have 12-cylinder engines or you don't have all these luxury features, you don't have the great ride, you don't have the performance. So, I mean, you have to pay for something, right? Also, many people commented that I'm stupid for going to the dealership or this dealership, as many call it, but actually, I never do. Well, I kind of do, but not really. You see, my cars, they get fixed by my local garage. They have fixed the cars for our family for 20 years, and from my very first car to all the cars I've owned since, they have always worked on it. They started out as an independent garage, and then with time, they got a, a Honda dealership and a uh, Peugeot dealership, but in general, they still are very, very competent. They work on any kind of cars. In fact, when they got the Honda dealership, I asked them if they still wanted to work on my cars. And the, the boss there, he went like, yeah, of course, if we only work on Hondas, we're not gonna keep the workshop open, which is not only saying something about Honda's reliability, but also might be difficult to imagine for people from other parts of the world, but Hondas are not that common here in Switzerland. I mean, they are not exotic, but you have like probably one Honda for every 15 VWs driving around. So yeah, a garage fixing only Hondas will probably not survive. But also, that garage, they have always done a good job. They are not cheap. Their rates, I think, are at 135 francs per hour, which again translates to about $135 per hour, which for Switzerland is pretty much okay, especially for a very, very competent workshop who often works on cars much more complicated and much, much more expensive than mine. But it's still a lot cheaper compared to the main dealers because for VW, main dealer rate uh, is about 180 francs. So that's quite a difference. And also, the main dealers, in my experience, they tend not to be, you know, the passionate, competent mechanics. I think it always depends on the mechanic that's actually working on the car. But my experience has been, I prefer to work with my workshop. I know those people. I know, I know the boss there. I've known them for 20 years. And if I tell them to do something and to do it something in a specific way, they will do. With other garages, you have to argue about things. You, they will not work on the car if they cannot do it their way. Or if, if you buy parts, then they will not install it. And with them, I have a long relationship. And they know that usually when I bring a part, it's the perfect part. And not, you know, guy bought some part of eBay and it doesn't even fit. So this is why I like to work with them. They usually also, they go directly to my mom's house, pick, pick the car up. I don't have to bring it. It's... It's very convenient and that's another factor I also want to speak about, convenience. I don't want to spend all my time working on cars because, as I already mentioned, I don't 
like it that much. So if I can have free time that I use for other things, I'm glad to pay for it. And then again, I think good work deserves good money. And my garage, I've been always very, very satisfied with them. And they do a good work, so they are entitled to charge a good amount of money. And honestly, I'm fine with it. And you may think I'm stupid for that, but then again, and this is another very blasé thing to say, it's just money. And thankfully, I am in the position where I, I have the spare money to spend on the car. And basically, it's not just spare money, it's money I have specifically for the cars. Because if it wasn't for the cars, I would never have gotten my bachelor's degree and I would probably not have the money to afford any kind of nice car. I would still try to have the nicest car I could possibly afford, but then I would most likely, you know, drive a bit of a lower end car and do a lot of more work myself. But I don't have to, and that's, that's what I'm saying here. What's your take on this? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think you can only be a true car guy if you fix your engines yourself, if you do LS swaps on your cars? Or can you just be a car guy, somebody who enjoys cars, who knows cars, who likes to drive cars without having to work on them yourself? Please tell me your opinion, comment down below. And more importantly, please tell me if a video like this is actually interesting to you because my channel is basically a review channel. I've done a few videos that are sort of vlog style, the ones where I basically do the total cost of ownership, calculations of my cars. But I really don't know what, what you like, what you don't like. So if this video was something you would like, if you were, would want to see more, you know, commentary or even rant videos, like in this case, uh, please write in the comments, tell me what you want, what I should do, if I should hide my face from the internet or, uh, or whatever. And hey, maybe even leave a like and maybe even share the video. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.